What's up guys? So in this video, I want to explain exactly why most online fitness plans, especially meal plans, are going to be BS. Plus, I'm going to explain the thought process that most online coaches go through when they are writing one of these BS meal plans. So here's the honest and brutal truth. The vast majority of custom plans that you might find online are not custom. They're not customized, they're not personalized, they are not tailored to you at all. If you see someone and they are giving you a plan that is cheap and customized and they are churning out dozens and dozens of these plans per day, they are not custom, okay? They are absolutely not custom. How could they be? So here's what they actually do. And I'm gonna explain the process in detail so that if you want to create one of these custom quote unquote custom, but actually cookie cutter plans, you can do so yourself. I don't really advise it, but after you watch this video, you should have a good idea of what they're actually doing and you can do this for free. So what they first do is they calculate your total daily energy expenditure. So for, based on your height, based on your weight, based on your activity level, they come up with a ballpark number that is what you are burning every day. Now, as I've said before, counting calories doesn't work that well. Calories are absolutely important, probably the most important factor of any diet, but the actual counting process doesn't always work that well. What they do is they take your total calories and they usually divide it into roughly six meals. Then every meal, they divide into three types of food. First, protein. Second, a type of starch. And third, a type of vegetable. So for the, for the protein, if you are a meat eater, it's probably going to be some kind of meat, some kind of fish. It's going to be some kind of eggs. If you're vegetarian, there are vegetarian options as well that are also perhaps sufficient in protein. But what they're going to do is they're going to give you roughly six ounces of meat per meal because that is going to be what gets you to roughly 30 to 40 grams of protein which is going to be what maximally stimulates muscle protein synthesis and keeps you full the second one is going to be a type of starch so this might be potato it might be rice it might be bread it might be pasta or noodles something along those lines and this will be the majority of the calories of the meal so this could be uh, 50 grams of carbs, this could be 75, could be 100. It depends on how active you are and how big you are. Finally, there's gonna be a type of vegetable. Usually this is broccoli, you know, chicken breast, rice, broccoli, that type of meal. Could be cauliflower, could be some other kind of green vegetable, but this is what gets you some micronutrients, some fiber, and really keeps you full. And then depending on whether you are bulking or cutting, they will tweak the total calories so that you are in a surplus or a deficit, and they will change the portion sizes based on your goals. Now, is this customized? I guess, sort of, but it's not really customized, okay? Who has time to eat six times per day? I know I don't, and I know most people don't either. There's a reason most human beings eat three times per day. It's the right combination of getting in enough calories, getting in enough food, getting in enough protein feedings, but also not too much where you're spending all of your time cooking and eating. Cooking and eating, repeat four more times. Now, what are the positives to this style of eating? There are benefits and I don't wanna overlook these because it wouldn't really be honest. If I'm hating on something, that's fine, but I also need to recognize the good, right? So. One good is that it keeps you honest. If you stick to the plan, you will almost certainly get pretty good results. So if you stick to the six meals per day, you stick to the right foods, the right portion sizes, everything, you're gonna lose weight or you're gonna gain. Just it's calories in, calories out. There's nothing magic about it. It's just everything is laid out and if you measure everything correctly, you're gonna get results. Second, it's a physically healthy way to eat. As long as you're getting in enough vegetables, you should be getting in enough micronutrients. You're gonna be full, you're gonna be satiated, you're gonna be glowing, girl. It's gonna work well. Also, it's worth noting that some people actually prefer to eat in this style. A very rigid, inflexible approach is not suitable for a lot of people, but other people, they actually like it because they don't have to think they can just eat the same foods at every meal 
and it really can just be on autopilot. They don't have to actually make decisions. Everything is laid out for them, and they don't have to think about food. They just make the food, eat the meals, and it's very, very easy. Another benefit is that you don't have to directly count calories. Because this meal is already planned out, you just have to weigh and measure foods, and therefore you don't actually have to count the actual calories because this you know, mindless coach did it for you. They probably had some kind of calculator or whatever, but either way, you don't have to count the calories because they already did, and they just translated it into portion sizes. This can be more convenient for some people. However, any of these benefits could be done by yourself. If your coach is just giving you this type of plan, I guarantee you that they spent about five minutes on your plan. So if you're spending 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200 bucks on this type of plan, you got played, son. You got played. Plus, the drawbacks are pretty significant. First, you can't go to any restaurants because you don't know how they prepare the food. So if they prepare the food with some extra butter or grease or lard or any kind of oil, that is instantly gonna be way over in calories. So if you prepared chicken breast and broccoli for dinner and your friends want to meet at a restaurant like normal human beings, well, you sort of need to prepare the food before and then take it with you to the restaurant and eat it in front of everyone like a freak. Some people might think about this as discipline. I kind of think of it as being a little bit weird. If you're not preparing for a competition, there's no need to be that strict. And for most people, when they go back to a normal diet that is not restrictive, they gain back every single pound of fat and then more. 98% or 95% or 90% of diets fail. I don't know the exact percentage, a lot of numbers get thrown out there, but the vast majority of diets fail. And the ones that fail the most are the ones that are the most restrictive. So this type of rigid, inflexible approach is absolutely the worst type of approach for long-term success. Also, this type of rigid and inflexible approach can lead to a lot of long-term issues like disordered eating or binging or anorexia or bulimia. It's not good to have an extremely rigid approach. The truth of the matter is, you can fit almost any food into your diet, okay? Any food, as long as it is within your calories, is fair game. Total calories and total protein is really all that matters. And as long as you are hitting your macros, you don't have to have a, an extremely inflexible and rigid approach. Most meal plans, they are clean eating. And while this does have some benefits, the drawbacks for most people far outweigh them. Let's say this online guru gives you a 10 week plan with all the meals laid out. It looks like they spent a ton of time. They didn't. And you follow this approach for 10 weeks. You open the cupboard, you look at the candy bar, but you don't eat the candy bar because it's not on your shitty meal plan for 10 weeks. What's gonna happen on week 11? You've reached your goals, you're hungry, your hormones are messed up, and what do you do? Do you not eat the candy bar because you've changed your habits? Or do you eat the candy bar? You probably eat the candy bar, and there's nothing wrong with that, but you probably eat a lot more than just one. You eat a bunch of candy bars and you probably go back to your old weight. You don't need to learn to live without food. You need to learn to live with food, with all foods. Your diet should be flexible enough that you can include just about any food. As long as calories and protein are equated, your results will be the same. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jeff, you're an online coach. Are you talking shit against yourself? And if you weren't thinking that, you're thinking it now. And the answer is no. All of my plans are very, very flexible. They are actually personalized. I send someone a questionnaire with a lot of questions, about 35 or 40 questions, and I actually answer and respond to almost all of their responses. So I ask them a question, they write their answer, and then when I send back their plan, 
if there is any kind of issue with their sleep or their diet or their stress or their lifestyle or whatever, I respond to that actual comment. You know it's custom because I am actually writing to you. It's not just some shitty Excel spreadsheet with how many grams of chicken breast to consume how many times per day. Furthermore, any plan that I write is based on what you are doing now. If you've been doing one meal per day and it's working really well, I'm not like, have you tried six meals per day? No. Based on what is already working or not working, I make adjustments to what you are already doing. If you've been having a carnivore diet, I don't make you go vegan or vice versa. It is based on what you are already doing and it is actually customized. I try to make as few changes to what is currently happening while you are still getting results. So it isn't a complete overhaul because for most people, that's not realistic. You can use your willpower and your discipline and your determination and your motivation to get through a four week diet or even a six week diet or maybe even a 10 week contest prep diet. But that is not a sustainable long term solution. Honestly, I don't care where you are in eight weeks. What I'm looking for is where you are in a year or two years or five years or 10 years. That is going to be much more important from my perspective. Is there some value to these cookie cutter, quote unquote, customized, personalized plans that aren't really customized or personalized? Yes, for some people, they can get results and they can change their body by doing this. I'm not saying they don't work because in a lot of cases they do. However, you have to realize that the more followers someone has on social media, the more likely that the plan is going to be not that effective and not personalized or customized. If someone has a million followers, they are not dealing with you. They are paying someone else to deal with your shit. Okay. They're not actually doing anything. They're just outsourcing it or automating it every single time. Anyway, with this type of cookie cutter plan, there's no reason that you can't just write it yourself based on what you learned in this video. All right. That is all for this video. Make sure to like subscribe, turn on the notifications, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.